One of the oldest and most successful clubs in England, founded in 1874, Aston Villa have won European trophies, league trophies, FA Cups and League Cups. But now it's over 25 years since their last major trophy win and one of the founders of the Premier League now find themselves just a few points off the relegation zone with the man they brought back in to spearhead a new revival now sacked. Enter this man, Unai Emery, the man who says a heartfelt goodbye to Villarreal and a good evening to the Aston Villa faithful as we embark on a brand new FIFA 23 Aston Villa career mode. It's a bright new future with Unai Emery at the helm, but first and foremost, we've got to check this squad out. Okay, so we've got a few 80 plus rated players. We've got Leon Bailey, Coutinho, Luca Dina, but you know when your goalkeeper is the best rated player on your team, you know you've got some work to do. A 21 year old 75 rated Jacob Ramsey is going to turn into an absolute monster in the center of the park with the likes of Konza and Matty Cash, two others that I've got my eye on that will hopefully turn into big players for us in the future. Apart from that though, we're looking Looking pretty light in central midfield. The only two reserves we've got are Sanson and then Donker as well. So it's looking likely I might have to think about converting Coutinho into a central midfielder. The only two wingers we've got at the club are Leon Bailey and Buendia as well. So it's looking likely we're going to have to dive into the transfer market for a winger too. Doesn't really look like there's too much going on in the youth academy either. We've got one guy, George Bull, potential 91. I'll add you to the senior team and then I'll stick you straight on the loan list. You'll see it's not just incoming transfers that matter to me, it's also youth prospects as well. And you'll see I'm setting up scouting networks in England, Germany and France as well. So let's see what they come back with. We got 75 mil in the transfer budget to play with and I'm hoping that plus some extra money coming in from these boys that I've stuck on the transfer list will give us a few different options to play with in the transfer market. Looks like the first man out the door is gonna be this man, Marvellous Nakambia. What an unbelievable name. 5.6 million from Bochum. Pack your bags, son, escorted out the door by Unai Emery himself and he's followed up by Morgan Sanson 9.5 mil from Newcastle is the next one to go couldn't settle at Southampton couldn't settle at Arsenal and now couldn't settle at Aston Villa 6.7 million Callum Chambers out the door off you go across the channel to Stad Rene number four out the door Jed Steer backup goalkeeper not really much to say about him to be honest Ashley Young makes it outgoing number five he's an Aston Villa legend but at 37 he doesn't really have too much else to offer me at the moment and with Palace coming in with an offer of 1.1 mil I could not turn that one down these outgoings are coming thick and fast Leander Dendonka makes it number six 9.3 mil to Lille. And it's another one of my players looking for pastures new across the channel in France. It's time for some incoming transfer business of our own though and we are starting with a massive one. Weston McKenney, 33.3 mil from Juventus and my word, doesn't he look good in that shirt. 23 years old, six foot box to box central midfielder, high attacking and defensive work rate and his stats are off the charts. What an absolute monster he is going to be for the next few years for us. Next up is our second transfer. And now that we've got McKenney, the headline transfer of the summer out of the way, it's time to shift our focus onto a more youth orientated signing. And that's where we land on this man, Kalmadine Sulemana. 75 rated, 20 years of age, can play left wing, left midfield and striker as well. He's got bags of potential. He's got absolute electric pace and he's got plenty of potential to grow as well. Next one through the door is the magician, the man that Pochettino once dubbed a mini Messi. He's smashing it up in the Champions League at the moment and it's time to bring him back to the Premier League. It is that man, Marcus Edwards. 23.6 mil from Sporting Lisbon. He's got four star skill moves. He's got great agility, balance and pace and he'll provide loads of competition up against Leon Bailey on the right hand side. And here's the last signing of the summer, Castello Lukeba. 19 year old centre back it will replace the outgoing backup of Bednarik who I've just terminated his loan back to Southampton like most of my other signings he's young he's got bags of potential he's got decent stats to begin with but especially if I upgrade his development plan he's got loads of room to grow so here's how we're looking at the start of the season we've gone 4-3-3 Weston McKenney is the only new signing who's actually been able to make the starting 11 the likes of Marcus Edwards Sulimana and Lukeba as well all on the bench but overall, our squad is looking a lot stronger than it was at the start of the episode. And in terms of tactics, I want us pressing on heavy touch. I want us defending higher, much higher up the pitch. I want to build up play to be much, much quicker. And I want us to be playing a lot wider than 40 as well. Let's dink that one right all the way up. To 70. So we're going to do things a little differently this series and we're going to play one season per episode with some match highlights along the way. We'll check in how we're getting on mid-season, make some changes to the team and transfers in Jan if we need to. But for now, let's get started with the football. Oh, Leon Bailey's through here. He's got a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Is he going to square it? I am going to square it. Danny Ings is there. It's our first goal of the season and it's an absolute incisive breakaway. Marcus Edwards with the corner flings that one in. Coutinho almost gets his head on it. He's headed away to Sulimana. 
back out wide to Edwards now. Edwards tries to fling a ball in straight into the keeper's hands. What on earth is the keeper doing? And Guilbert easily heads that one home. What on earth was the goalkeeper doing? Oh, Suleimana runs onto that one and he's got the pace to drive away from the defender. Tries to shift it onto his right. He does. It's a first goal for Aston Villa for Suleimana and what a finish it was. Oh, Son's got it on the left hand side. He's got acres of space to run into. Konza, what is Konza doing? Oh my word. Harry Kane with the penalty here. Martinez has got the chance to keep us in the game and it's absolutely no chance. Kane buries that one for 2-0. Buendia on the left hand side. He's got no options, but it's a lovely touch. Trying to get away from the defender. Tries to lay it off to Leon Bailey who hits it first time off the bar. Penalty here against Liverpool. Danny Ings to take. I'm going to go to his right hand side, sends the keeper the wrong way, it's 2-0 here. Salah flings that one into the box, it's a great ball, it's an even better head from Darwin Nunes and Liverpool are back in this game. Oli Watkins to step up to take the penalty here, I'm going to stick it straight down the middle, hope the goalkeeper dives, he does and he saves. Skamaka has it for West Ham, tries to lay it off for Griffo on the left hand side, my word. Kamara keeps driving forward in the centre, gives it to Buendia, lovely turn away from the defender, can he get away from another one, goes for the finesse, oh my word, it's phenomenal. Southampton with the penalty in the 67th minute. The chance to put themselves back in the game. It's saved by Martinez. You've got to be kidding me. A penalty literally five minutes later in the game. It's another chance. It's another goal. This time it's for Southampton. One all. Stones into Phillips. Phillips gives it to Gundogan. Gundogan looks forward into Haaland. He's got it in the box. Lays it back off to Mares. He goes out wide to Lewis. Cuts back to Mares to Haaland. They're absolutely playing us off the park here. Oh my word, it's unbelievable. Danny Ings. Danny Ings lays it off into the path of Buendia. Buendia trying to drive into the box now. But City are trying to defend as much as they can. We put it across the box. Marcus Edwards is blocked off. Oh my word. Gundogan on the right hand side goes past Luca Dean like he's not even there. And Haaland absolutely lashes that one into the back of the net. Haaland one on one with Diego Carlos. I'm trying to hold him up as best as I can. Foden lays it across to Haaland for his third. It's game over here. And what a hat trick for Haaland. Bamiang. Bamiang trying to drive at Mings here. Plays a lovely ball into the path of Schick. Oh, he turns away from the defender so nicely. Douglas Luiz tries to bring this one forward. He's got an option in Buendia ahead of him. And he finds Buendia. Buendia tries to play this one across the box. He does. It's a brilliant pass. And it's an even better finish from Marcus Edwards. It's 1 0 here against Leeds. Marcus Edwards on the left hand side. Luca Dean. Luca Dean looks for Danny Ings into the box. He finds him. Danny Ings on his right. Great save. It's a penalty for Leeds here. Wind is going to take this. I'm going to dive to the right. And it's a brilliant save again from Martinez. So we're at the midway point of the season. And to be fair, we're doing pretty well. We sit sixth in the table, three points behind Spurs with a game in hand. City, of course, find themselves top with Liverpool and Manchester United chasing them very closely behind. Newcastle United have found themselves in fourth with Spurs just ahead of us in fifth. No sign of Chelsea and Arsenal, who now sit 11th and 12th. So they've had an absolute horror show in the first part of the season. And scrolling down to the bottom, we've got Bournemouth, Fulham and Leeds in the relegation zone. As for the other cup competitions, we've got Rotherham in the third round of the FA Cup, but it looks like we got absolutely battered 4-1 at home by Manchester United, who dumped us very easily out of the fourth round of the League Cup. And in terms of stats so far in the season, it looks like Ollie Watkins sits top of the goal scoring chance with nine goals in 13 appearances. That is not bad from him. Coutinho, he sits in second, six goals inside 12, with the likes of Leon Bailey, uh, Buendia, and also Douglas Luiz sitting with three goals as well. Luca Dean has chipped in with two, and Danny Ings has not had the best first half of the season, only two goals from him. Looks like new signing Weston McKenney has become a mainstay in the starting 11. 20 appearances, 17 of those coming in the Premier League, but only one goal and one assist to his name. Suleiman is struggling a little bit though, only nine appearances for him, one goal and one assist as well. He has, however, gone up by two ratings, so he's now up to 77. And as for Marcus Edwards, he's gone up by one to 79. But again, only one goal, two assists in 12 appearances for him. So two of our new wingers, both struggling to settle in in the first half of the season, it's got to be said. And as for Lukeba, it's not too different for him either. He's gone up by one to 77, but he's only made seven appearances. He's made four in the league and three in the Carabao Cup. So again, similar to the two wingers, struggling to settle in a little bit. But again, we've got to think these are young players and we've bought them for the long term. So hopefully over the course of this career mode, they'll start to come good. However, one problem I do have is that my backup left back, Ludwig Augustinsson, has obviously been complaining and moaning to his parent club, Seville, that he's not been getting enough game time. And so much so that they've decided to actually recall him whilst on loan within the first six months of his loan. So that means I'm now going to have to dip my toes back into the transfer market to go out and try and see if I can find a left.
left back. And after a bit of wheeling and dealing in some back and forth contract negotiations, we've managed to snag this guy, Juan Miranda from Real Betis for 16 million. 22 years of age, 77 rated. He's actually rated one higher than Augustinson. He's got decent pace. He's got decent physical and mental stats as well. And of course, like all of the other transfers I'm trying to do in this career mode, he's got bags of potential to grow as well. One final thing I do need to do this transfer window is sort out that man's contract. Because at the moment, he's got a release clause of around 23 mil and I want to make sure I get rid of that one straight away. I cannot afford to have my potential superstar in the making go on very cheap money. But for now, it's back to some match highlights and we're going to kick off the second half of the season with a home game against a second place Liverpool. Luis Diaz. Oh, nice pass into Fabinho. Tries to play it into Salah. He does into the box. What a save. Luis Diaz always one-on-one -on -one with Matty Cash. Matty Cash is going to try and hold him up as much as he can. Doesn't do a particularly good job. Darwin Nunez. It's a wonderful finish. And Liverpool lead here 1-0 inside the first half. Mo Salah with another penalty. We just cannot stop giving away penalties this season. It's a great strike. And we almost got a touch on it, but it's too powerful for the goalkeeper. Liverpool lead here, 2-0. Oh, Suleiman is almost one-on-one, -on -one, plays it into the path of Danny Ings. He's got a finish here, takes his time. Oh, my word. Weston McKennie driving forward here, going to look for a ball over the top to Danny Ings. Can he reach him? He can reach him. Danny Ings with the chance to make amends here. Can he make amends? He does make amends, buries it into the top left-hand corner. We lead here, 1-0 against Fulham. Ball through to Danny Ings. It's a wonderful ball through to him. He's trying to drive into the area, just doesn't have the speed to get away from the defender but he switches it onto his right finish. Brilliant stop. Into Ronaldo. Ronaldo trying to twist and turn. Ends up laying it off to Anthony on the right-hand side. He's looking for Ronaldo over the top. Instead, he uses his trickery to almost get past Konza. And he ends up giving it to Ronaldo. Ronaldo continues to drive forward. No one putting in a challenge, my word. Anthony now has it into Ronaldo again. McTominay now into Anthony. Wonderful stuff from Manchester United. Anthony drives into my penalty area. What on earth was Konza doing? It's too easy for United. They take the lead here. McTominay on a plate. 1-0. What on earth were my defence doing? Edwards picks this one up on the right-hand side, trying to shift it onto his left. Shift it onto his left. He does go for the finesse. Oh, my goodness. That has got to be the best goal of the season so far. Unbelievable from Marcus Edwards. Danny Ings with the penalty here. I'm going to go to my left. Is he going to send the keeper the wrong way? He does indeed. It's 2-0 here against Brentford. But now Brentford have a penalty. It's in Buemo who's going to step up. Sends me the wrong way, and he brings Brentford right back into this game. Solimana, 83 minutes in. He's got acres of space to drive into to seal this game, to put it to bed straight at the goalkeeper. Wendia with the corner here, going to try and put this into the penalty spot. It's a good corner. It's a great head over the bar. Townsend, good pass into the box. Mope. Now they have it back with Ghana Gay. Mope strikes, great save. Leon Bailey on the left-hand side, going to try and look for the run of Weston McKinney. Finds the run of Weston McKinney. He's going to look for a ball across the box. Pickford just gets there in time. We're only 16 minutes in and City have got a penalty already. And De Bruyne, oh my word, it's saved by Martinez. And somehow he gets to the second ball. Haaland for City. Oh, he's got an option of Mares out wide on the right-hand side. Absolutely no one covering him. Mares tries to drive into the box. He's held up a little bit, but they've still got hold of the ball. Bernardo Silva. Oh, my goodness. What a phenomenal strike from Bernardo Silva. Weston McKinney, for some reason, finds himself out wide on the right-hand side. Goes back in field for McGinn. He gives it to Ollie Watkins, just trying to find some sort of angle. Leon Bailey is, is actually on side. Shifts it onto his left. Goes for the finesse. Way over. Okay, so as you can see, the second half of the season is not going as well as the first half was. 36 games played, and we've now slunk down to 8th place in the Premier League. And we are quite a few points away from trying to get in the Europa League. However, in bigger news, you guessed it, we have somehow made the final of the FA Cup and we are playing against Wolverhampton Wanderers, the most unlikely of semi-finals in 2023. I think anyone would have predicted but we have somehow made it here, and now we have our first opportunity for major silverware. So here we go then, the FA Cup final is upon us, the atmosphere is absolutely electric, the fans are buzzing, the players are buzzing, I'm buzzing, and it's time to get to work. Look at this, Wolves getting into the final ahead of Chelsea, we get there ahead of Hull, who somehow managed to get past Liverpool in the quarterfinals. What an absolute crazy journey to this final. Luca Dean cutting in field now. Good stuff from him. Oh, wonderful challenge from Endo. And Raul plays in Adama Traore. Is he offside? He's not. He's got the pace. Diego Carlos tracks him very, very well. Goes in field to Jacob Ramsey. He's going to look all the way out to the left-hand side to Luca Dean, who's running. And he's got loads of space. Going to try and whip a ball in. It's a good ball in. And almost into the head of Ollie Watkins. Huang now on the left-hand side. 
Plays a lovely ball through into the path of Raul Jimenez. He's now trying to go past Konza. Good defending. Konza, oh, just as I say, good defending. My word, almost gave it away for us there. Whipped in from Moutinho. It's a good head from Wang. It's an even better save from Martinez. Moutinho with another corner. It's Buendia, sorry, Konza this time. He's going to try and head that one clear. Goes back to Moutinho, trying some tricks. Gives it all the way out. And what an absolute waste of a corner that was. Eight Nori. For Wolves into Huang. Nice turn away from the defender. Drives into the box. Martinez makes himself look big again. He's keeping us in it so far this game. Oh, we give it away once again. This has been a nervy start to this game. And Martinez once again to the rescue. Goes out to the left hand side into Buendia. He goes in midfield to Ollie Watkins. There's a ball ahead if he can find him. The ball was actually meant to be for McKenney, but it's Leon Bailey across the box. It's too heavy. Into McKenney. McKenney finds Jacob Ramsey. We're now trying. We're starting to get into this game now. Ramsey first time. Good save from Jose Sarr. Leon Bailey. Nice, nice work from him. McKenney now. Can he find a pass? He can find a pass. Into Ollie Watkins. Running into the box. Ollie Watkins. Oh my goodness me. Jacob Ramsey still going. Jacob Ramsey from distance. Straight at the goalkeeper. Jacob Ramsey. Nice, nice play. Gives it into Buendia. He's got acres of space to try and run into. Can he try and find a pass? I'm going to try and cut this back into Ollie Watkins. Nathan Collins with a good interception. Going to be Luca Dean with another corner. Tries to put this one into the box. He does. And it's Weston McKenney. It's our star signing from the summer who gets his head up and smashes it into the top right-hand corner with his head inside the penalty area. Weston McKenney, what an impact he's made. And that could well be the most important goal in his career, the most important goal in Aston Villa's history over the last 25 years. All oh, cash. Silly from him. Gives it away to Guides. Guidez now has got loads of space to drive into. He's going to try and look for a ball into the box, trying a little bit of trickery. He's still got it. Konza's holding him up very well. And that is stellar defending from Konza. Tyrone Mings. Tyrone Mings, of all people, finds himself driving forward. He's going to try and lay this off to Marcus Edwards. Marcus Edwards into the box, gets it onto his left, goes for the finesse. Oh, my goodness. It is absolutely stupendous. Marcus Edwards, I don't know why he's celebrating with the ball. Leave it in the goal. Unbelievable finish. And surely now we are FA Cup winners. Three blows his whistle. It is game over here. The players are running on the pitch. They're celebrating. I'm celebrating. The fans are celebrating. They cannot believe it. They have longed, longed for the chance to see their team finally lift a major trophy. And my word, what a special day it is for them. And here we go then. Captain Emmy Martinez. He's going to step up. He's going to be the man to lift the FA Cup for Aston Villa. The players get ready. He gets ready. And he lifts the trophy for Aston Villa. Unbelievable stuff. It's our first piece of silverware in this career mode. And long may it continue. And there you have it. Aston Villa FA Cup winners in our very first season. Unbelievable. And as you can see, I've simmed the last couple of games of the season. And we have finished up in eighth position. It's a position, to be fair, I probably would have taken at the start of the season. We were aiming for Europe, but... Eighth position, it's pretty good for Aston Villa considering they've been fighting relegation for the last couple of seasons. But with the FA Cup win, it does mean that we will, in fact, be playing European football next season. And we will be joined by Spurs, who end up finishing in fifth place. Manchester City win the title, Liverpool in second, United third, and West Ham... West Ham, unbelievable from them. They find themselves in fourth place and they will find themselves in the Champions League next season. As for the relegation zone, it's Fulham, Nottingham Forest and Leeds United who will be playing championship football next year. We, of course, were the FA Cup winners. Manchester City have gone and won the League Cup against Tottenham in the final and PSG have finally managed to get their hands on the Champions League. It's a 2-1 win against Barcelona in the final. An unbelievable season for them. Ollie Watkins finishes the club's top goal scorer for the season. 22 goals in 34 appearances. 15 of those in 26 Premier League appearances. So that is not a bad return whatsoever for the English marksman. He goes up three ratings as well. He's now up to an overall of 80. Coutinho, he's gone up by 1 to 83. He chipped in with 11 goals. In 29 appearances, seven of those coming in the Premier League. Marcus Edwards, he's gone up by two to now to an overall rating of 80. 
Chipped in with five goals, five assists in 30 appearances as well. Weston McKenney, my superstar summer signing, chipping in with four goals and three assists in 38 appearances. And of course, the main one being the opening goal in the FA Cup final. He's gone up by one rating now to 81. And with 30 Premier League appearances, he has well and truly established himself as our star midfielder. Bit of a disappointing season for Leon Bailey, only chipping in with three goals and three assists. He has gone up by two ratings. He's gone up to 82 now. So I will be expecting a hell of a lot more for him in the upcoming season. Matty Cash, he's gone up by two as well. He's now up to 81. He's also chipped in with two goals and 36 Premier League appearances. Jacob Ramsey, he's the big one, got up by three. 17-8 now overall rated with a 24 appearances in the Premier League. So similar to a couple of my other players, I am expecting some massive things from him in the upcoming seasons. Suleiman has struggled to settle in a little bit. Only one goal, one assist in 20 appearances. But like the others, he's gone up by three. He's now up to 78. Similar to Suleiman, Lukeba's also possibly struggled to settle in a little bit. 17 appearances, only 12 of those coming in the Premier League. No goals for him. I mean, he is a centre-back, so I wouldn't necessarily expect him to chip in with any goals. But he's gone up by two, and he's now a 78 rated. So definitely one to keep your eye out for in the upcoming few seasons. And my final signing, Juan Miranda, despite only coming in in January, he's already gone up by two. He's now 79 rated, and he's also made 11 appearances, nine of those coming in the Premier League. So similar to Lukeba, another one to keep your eye out for for the upcoming seasons. As for me, though, in spite of winning the FA Cup, you can see my current status with the board is still at weak. I don't really know what I've got to do to try and impress them. They wanted me to finish in a Europa League spot in the Premier League. We've gone and got a Europa League spot by winning the FA Cup, but it's still seemingly not good enough for them. Fortunately, though, the board have decided to keep me on, which means we will be getting a second episode of this Aston Villa career mode. You can see eighth in the Premier League, FA Cup winners out of the Carabao Cup in the fourth round. So our aims for next season are pretty simple. Paul, got to try and get into Europe via the Premier League this time next season. And again, now that we've had a taste of silverware, I want another one. Whether it's the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup, or it's the Europa League, I want us to be getting our hands on some silverware next season. But that is that for the end of this episode. Thanks everyone for watching. If you have enjoyed it, please feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.